Okay, so let's talk about the new challenge garden. I have been grinding it for like good two hours by now. Right, a lot of various strategies, all of that. I am sitting at a hefty rank one currently in my server with a solid lead, I'll say. <laughs> so I have gotten an SS rank run. I have reached 12.5 million, which is just half a million away from the best possible uh, the world so i currently stand in the like uh, 30 mystical scroll bracket right ranking the worlds i don't care uh again i'm sharing it so more people are able to do this and hopefully it helps them i really don't care about the ranking the worlds i'm only here for the best score the world but yeah uh, i will showcase you how i've done my rank and i'll just give you some general tips and strategies on how i managed to achieve it now first of all what i want to say is uh, you will most likely need a fairy king uh, for this dungeon and while i think the fire one is pretty good i have no experience with light and dark ones uh water one is the one you will be needing the most at least for what i have done because uh i know some of you might miss this but if you scroll here you'll notice that all fairy kings increase attack defense and hp by 100 percent which means their stats are essentially doubled you can also see this here and whenever they use a first skill, this only applies to their first skill, uh, they have various bonus effects. So Fire Fairy King, you get two mana back. Uh, for the Wind one, you get uh, additional cooldown decrease. Light one decreases uh, skill mana cost by one. Uh, this one cooldown as well, but we are looking for the Water one. Water Fairy King increases ultimate gauge acquisition by 35%. This means that Again, as long as there isn't some sort of a weird bug, which with this dungeon there definitely is, I'll more, tell more about it later, you are able to charge your ultimate from 2 to 3 hits. Again, it depends on whether you get lucky with the passive, it depends whether you have the marsh set and all of that, right? I have managed to charge it several times with only 2 hits, but most of the time it will take 3 hits. But yeah, I'll explain how I did the run and we'll jump into that in just a second. Okay, and this is the run. Uh, first of all, I will not stop it. I'll just showcase you the whole run. And after the run, I'll go into a single battle. I will probably not reach any like high score, but I will explain how I did it, right? So if the run would only start, please. <laughs> Come on, game, please. Okay, are you running? Thankfully. Okay, the team I currently used is actually very similar to the Infinite Ray team. So I used uh, the Fire Howl, Quacky, but this time I have Swapped instead of a Perna. I am using a Verdehim. So that will be very important later on. For now, like if you like swapping units, using Verdehil is really not needed for like the first minute. But after that, Verdehil becomes sort of a must. So just like with Infinite Raid, uh, the general strategy is pretty much the same. Uh, you just sort of bring them all towards the middle, wait for them to group up, and then just launch a single nuke to kill everything, right? As you can see, I have level 10 mana region and skill acceleration, so the meter set is useful. However, I definitely don't think it is required here. You can get away with any other set, and instead of having uh, something like a Huahi or something like a Verde Heal, you can use a Celia instead, right? To get that mana region, to get that damage up. For me, as you can see, I get mana from uh, the meter set, I get damage up from my wind skill tree, so Celia is not as much needed as it is for others, but if you do not uh, have a cleave summoner, if you have any other summoner, that will be a little bit more useful. The good thing here is unlike the previous ones, cleave is definitely not a required summoner because Yes, there is the same boss from the infinite raid, but uh, it is not as important to break that, uh, like his shield with the prologue. So wave six is where the first bot comes out. And for this one, I am spawning my Huahi's skill to actually, I have been testing waters, uh, water fairy king skill too, because it has ignore defense. It has uh, a lot of damage, right? Uh, that is not the way, that is not the way. For the first boss, you need to spam your Huaki skill too, because it does way, way more damage. And once uh, you are fighting the archers, 
you do want to spam Joaquin's skill too as well instead of uh, the Fairy Kings, right? Now this wave 7 is the scariest wave of the whole run because while they will not most likely kill you, uh, they will do massive damage and will stun you for like 15 seconds. Now I, I still did a mistake here where I didn't switch to a fire element so that caused me a lot of time, however if you notice I managed to pull all of the archers towards the boss which saved me a lot of time instead right and after that uh the rest of the run is pretty much just killing a lot of these blue things and i think i even go a little bit into the boss as you can see i'm spamming pisama's skill too because three three skill hits and you have your ultimate back uh but yeah uh, i reach the last boss with 10 seconds left and after that i just try to finish it off uh, with Pisama doing a little bit of damage. I managed to kill the boss, but if I kill the archers, I would have probably received the SSS rank. I'm not even sure. But yeah, that's how I did it. And I'll jump into the game and I'll explain a little bit more about uh, what to keep track of, what to watch out for, just so you have a general strategy about it. Okay, so here's how I'll go about it. Uh, for the weapons and sub-weapons, I have a Mita's shield as well as Mita's fire weapon and weapon, wind weapon. You can get away in most cases with just the wind weapon, at least for cleave or other elements or other summoners. You'll have to decide on that uh, yourself. I'm not too familiar, honestly, with like main PV strategies for others. But yeah, uh, this is the team you start with and I will try to explain it a bit. So first of all, I'll explain how uh, the waves work, right? So. First of all, the first wave, there will be a small wave here, and after this, there will be a big wave from all four sides. So the bad part is you don't actually need to kill that small wave. I only kill it to activate my mana region, but you can just literally wait in the center for like 10 seconds. Uh, I'll show it to you. I'm not gonna kill this wave. The next waves will spawn regardless, uh, but I mostly do it just to activate the mana region for my uh, set, right? And also, if you do it incorrectly, your Shushu will just refuse to use your skills, right? Then the water should come from here or here, okay. So yeah, again, you can wait, you can kill, up to you. I have the set, so I just like to cycle for ultimate, cycle for the skill usage, so that my mana is not sitting, right? Wave 4 will be for mini-bosses. Uh, they are wind elements, so what I do for these is I activate my skill 3 on cleave and kill them in 2 hits, because with the damage up, they will be able to do that, and this is... Either this wave or the next wave is where I would switch Shushu out for good. So you don't actually use Shushu the whole run, uh, you actually want to switch it for Pisamat. And this is the last wave where I would use, uh, like the previous wave was the last wave where I would be using Shushu, right? And from here on out, Pisamat is my main damage dealer. So for this wave, uh, again, nothing special, just keep spamming Pisamat skill 1, right? Because with all of the damage boosts, uh, it's just insane how much it boosts the damage. On this wave, once all of the minions spawn, I usually just like to drop an ultimate. Since you're gonna be charging the ultimate a lot with his first skill, as you can see, ultimate is already up, right? I like to heal up just before this, and for the mini boss, I use Faki, I use Faki and just kill with Faki, right? Because her ultimate is just way more useful, and then kill all of these with Faki, because I've tried doing it with a Pisamat and it's just not enough damage, just not enough damage. It usually needs two hits. Now this is the scariest wave because you will get stunned. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Uh, you can't be dodging. I did something like this. I tried to like dodge them a bit, but in the end, I still just get completely stun low. Seems like this one actually turned out pretty okay, I guess. Like, all of okay so i'm gonna do a provoke again my cliff misses uh he cliff misses a lot he misses a lot and even then my my guy died like uh, my hockey died but yeah uh one thing i'll notice about the boss is if you notice that he's quite low like 50 percent or less uh instead of spamming pisamat's first skill start spamming his second skill because as you know his second skill will do more damage or will do more defense penetration the more, uh, how do you say, it? the more damage or the less HP the boss has, right? So uh, at first it will do very low damage because it doesn't have any inbuilt penetration, but later on uh, it will do a little bit more. And even when the buff, 
boss buffs up that defense buff, right? Uh, it will just do significantly higher damage. Like it jumps from somewhere like to 5% per hit all the way to like 30% of boss's HP per hit. So definitely worth doing that. And yeah, apart from that, uh, as you can see, the run is just spamming your uh, Lala. I think it's called Lala, right? Uh, spamming your Lala for the first four and a half waves. And you switch to the water Fairy King Pisamat either when the fire lizards start or at worst when the water yetis start at wave 4, right? You clear the uh, wind lizards and that's why I usually switch, I just forgot with the fire lizards. I personally switch right after the wind mini bosses and before the fire lizards come out because if you walk backwards a bit, like uh, let's say, let's just imagine that uh, these four waves are the four mini bosses, right? Uh, you can go like this a bit. You just walk a bit back like this and they will stack up pretty nicely and with his uh, second skill you can actually just pull them all into a single thing, right? And finish them off with a single skill one. That's what I usually do the most. And another thing I want to point out about the regular waves is if you want to save a little bit of time, uh, what you can do is since the first wave will come out from one of the sides, uh, go a little bit back from the side where the waves are coming from because by then, uh, if you want to imagine, uh, the wave from here will be somewhere around here and it will just take less time for this wave to walk to the middle because they only need to walk to around like here. That way, once you are around here, you can use a single Lala skill too and just nuke everyone. Then once the fire ones come from here, instead of sitting in the middle, you can sit somewhere around here, right? And the same thing with the water one. If they come out from there, uh, you can sit somewhere around here and just kill everyone with a single skill. It's not a lot, but it does save you a few seconds, which are important in this dungeon, yeah? And yeah, hopefully this helps you get some good scores and secure those mystical scrolls. If you have any questions, let me know. I have tried quite a few units. I've tried the uh, Fire uh, Fairy King. I've tried uh, stuff like Celia. I tried stuff like... Uh, other AoE damage dealers. This was the best that I could come up with, but yeah, that's about it. And peace.